Hello, this is Howard Tierski, CEO of From the Digital Transformation Agency. You've made it to the fifth video in our series sponsored by the Front End of Innovation Conference about the five challenges that most large enterprises face around the issue of digital transformation and innovation in the enterprise. If you haven't watched the other videos, you don't need to stop this one. It's okay to watch them out of order, but I definitely encourage you to go back and check out the other ones. As a quick review, the first concept we covered is the fact that organizations tend to resist change. The individuals within organizations tend to resist change. And if you want to drive profound digital transformation, you need to have strategies to tackle that. The second challenge that we talked about was the fact that many organizations despite having market research groups, don't truly have the level of insight into their customers and their current points of pain to drive the most effective innovation process. Getting the team that's engaged in actually designing the products that are going to drive the transformation, getting them to understand the customer at an intimate level is a key success factor. The third challenge that we talked about in the third video was the fact that many enterprises really have processes that are insufficiently tolerant of risk. We want to take smart risk, but transformation, innovation requires some level of risk. You're not going to get massive upside without a portfolio of initiatives, some of which will fail. That's part of the process and having the right mindset around that and the right processes to be willing to fund things and continue to move them forward until they find success. That's the third challenge that most enterprises face. The fourth challenge was lack of agility. And we talked about a number of different types of agility that many large enterprises lack, whether it's the agility of their technology systems to change as rapidly as needed to support the test and learn experimentation of digital transformation, or the agility of their teams to work together across the organization as is needed, or the agility of their decision-making process to be able to constantly sense what's going on in the marketplace and quickly make decisions about things that are going to change. So check out those four videos for a lot more information and tips about those four challenges. Today, we are talking about the fifth and final challenge that large enterprises face, and that is the lack of a true transformation vision. Now, most organizations have what I would call a growth vision. Our vision is to serve the maximum number of people, to sell the maximum amount of product, to grow different segments, to expand in new areas. But that vision in most enterprises that I've worked with, and that's quite a lot, is usually about doing more of the same that they already do, optimizing what they already do, expanding what they already do in the ways that they already sell it to very similar customer groups that they already sell it to and interacting with their customers in a very similar way. Unfortunately, as the world is so dramatically changing around us, for most organizations to be successful, they're going to need to more profoundly change and adapt. And the methods of driving change or, or growth within an organization often don't work well. You know, the, the most common technique that I see for a leader within a large enterprise to drive growth is to say to each area, I need to drive growth. I'm expecting you to contribute to the growth in this way, you to contribute to the growth in this way. For example, product group, I need new products. Um, you know, channel group, I want you to find new channels. Sales group, I want you to sell more stuff. And if you kind of multiply all these effects together on a spreadsheet, you know, you can get something that looks like you'll have pretty good growth. The problem is, though, Imagine a caterpillar trying to figure out how it could fly and having every part of its body come up with its own strategies and methods to contribute to somehow flying. You know, it's, that's segmented approach works when you're trying to do that kind of multiplying scaling of what you already have with little optimizations in different areas, but it doesn't work when you're trying to transform a whole organization. And that's what we need to do because of the massively transforming digital world. And you know, the need for a vision is what really is going to coordinate your whole organization together. I want to tell you a quick story. Know who this is? This is Lana Turner, famous movie star from the 40s. And the story of her discovery as a Hollywood starlet, I believe to be probably one of the most poisonous stories in our sort of cultural consciousness today. For anyone who doesn't know the story, the story is that in about 1934, I believe it was, Lana Turner, at that time called Judy Turner, 
is sitting, uh, skipping high school, 16 years old, having a Coke at the counter at Schwab's Pharmacy in Hollywood. And she's spotted by a famous movie director who says, I need, you're beautiful and you look wholesome and you'd be great in a movie, I'm going to take you in for a screen test. So he brings her to the back lot and he does a screen test and the screen test is fantastic. He puts her in a movie and she becomes one of the top stars in Hollywood. The rest is history. So there's two problems with this story. The first problem is it's actually not true. The whole story is fiction. But even if it were true in this particular instance, this is not how transformation happens. This is not how a 16-year-old high school kid becomes a movie star. And if you listen, I was listening the other day on Howard Stern to Jennifer Hudson talking about her success. And he asked her whether everybody in her church, when she was a child and was singing and had an enormous voice, knew that she was going to be a star. And, they, and she said no, because there were a lot of kids in my church who could sing like that. And there were a lot of people in my family who could sing like that. It, the difference was, yes, she had the talent, but she had the drive, determination. She had the vision to succeed, and so she did. Carl Sandburg, the great poet and three times Pulitzer Prize winner, said, nothing happens unless first a dream. George Washington Carver, famous American inventor, said, where there is no vision, there is no hope. And Helen Keller said, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. So what is this transformation vision that you need to create? What are the components of it? Well, let's talk about a few. I think there's two parts to a transformation vision. The first is to have a vision of how the world is changing. How are your customers going to be changing over the next few years? How is technology likely to be changing? And what do you think your competitors or new competitive competitors entering your market that might come along, what do we think they might do? And the second component of that is to ask, OK, so what new products and services are we going to bring to market to take advantage of the changes in this, in this environment in our customers' needs to compete with these new entrants? How might our business model change based on our new capabilities of technology or new ways customers are interested in doing business? What, how will our operations potentially change? How might our cost structure change? And how, ultimately, Will our interaction with our customer change? Will we be delivering on different channels? Will we, will, we, will we be serving and supporting them in different ways? Might we, in fact, be dealing with an entirely new set of customers than we were before? Now, it might seem like in order to be able to do this, you need to be able to foretell the future. And in fact, I think one of the reasons why many enterprises don't truly do this, they have some kind of a five-year plan, but it's not really a vision for transformation. And I think one of the reasons is because they believe that they really just can't see that far out, and so they believe that it's not practical. But can you foretell the future? I'll tell you, it's um, about 4.30 right now, and let me foretell the future. I believe that in the next couple hours, many people in my geographic area will be having dinner. I'm going to be heading to the airport shortly for a flight to London, and I predict that there will be lines uh, at the uh, TSA uh, checkpoints that I'll have to take into account to get, on my air f to, to get on my flight on time. So the truth is, we can foretell the future to some degree. We might not always be right, but there's a lot of information that we can use to try to get at least a reasonable hypothesis of what the future is going to look like. Was the iPhone that much of a shock to us after we saw what BlackBerry did, after we saw products like the Trio and other smartphones that came before? Yes, it had aspects that we might not have anticipated, but its existence on the market was relatively predictable. The timing might not have been able to be predicted precisely by someone who wasn't in the know with Apple's plans, but the, 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 the fact of its coming really was predictable. And so one of the things that we have to get over to get into the predictions business is the fear of being wrong. We will sometimes be wrong. But Seth Godin said, the cost of being wrong is less than the cost of doing nothing. And I believe absolutely that that's true. One last thought about creating transformation visions, which is we have to be able to think in terms of transformation time. 
Sometimes our focus is so much on the next quarter, the things the street is expecting to see from us you know, in, our next, in our next quarterly report, or the things that we have to get done right now. And that's the reality of the world of, of the large enterprise, particularly in the case of public companies. But in order to be successful long term, you have to be able to think in terms of transformation time. You have to think a few years out. Why? Because the transformations that you need are oftentimes going to take a few years. If you think of the products and solutions that burst onto the market, like the iPhone, that was in development for years. And so too many of the things that we see as overnight successes are really the result of long-term visioning and planning and R&D efforts and product development. And by the way, many things that never succeeded went through those processes too. So as we said in our uh, video about tolerance for risk, we have to be ready to do this based on a number of potential futures. And you know, uh, obviously those that are successful, those that are right, will be those that define the future of our company. So a couple of quick tips before we go. First of all, you have to be able to plan before you know for sure what's going to happen, as we were just saying. Secondly, how to figure out how to change, how to transform. I mean, that's a very individualized question. But one of the things we like to do is say, what is the fundamental value proposition that your company is bringing to your customer? And how is that value proposition, whether it's transportation, entertainment, uh, education, whatever it may be, nutrition, whatever that fundamental value proposition is, let's take away, for, take away for a minute the exact ways that we deliver today. If we think about a changed world in the future, how might that be best delivered in the future? If we were building a new company today that was going to launch three years from now, that was a startup, how would we build that for where we think the world will be in a few years? and start using that exercise as a way of defining what your transformation, potential, transformation vision should potentially be. Track the changes in the world then. You have to be engaged in ongoing research, both to initially develop your long-term transformation vision and then to continue to check to see whether your predictions appear to be coming true or have things veered in another direction. Is the time frame that you initially anticipated changing? If so, you want to be able to adjust your transformation vision to align with what reality appears to be. And simply be willing to be wrong. Take bets, consider different possible futures, and prepare for multiple possible futures so you're prepared for the actual one when it arrives. Well, we've reached the end of our fifth and final video in the series on the challenges that large enterprises face when driving digital transformation. I hope it's been useful to you. If you haven't seen all five videos, there's a link below that you can go back and find all five videos. I'd love to get your feedback for future video series. You can email me at fei at from.digital. We want to thank the Front End of Innovation Conference for sponsoring this series. You can also follow me on Twitter at at Tiersky for links to these videos and future videos as well. Thanks very much. Have a great day.